Hello and welcome to season three of Webflow and Code. At long last, I finally got around to setting things up. Uh, you can see my new, my, my new flat, uh, my new property. I've got lights, I've got cameras, I've got sound. Um, I'm really sorry that this took so long uh, to set up. Really, honestly, um, I just struggled with a bit of motivation to do it. But don't worry, I have been making notes on some uh, amazing episodes that I've got lined up. Um, some new ideas and new directions and things like that. So I'm gonna kick this series off with just a, a casual episode just to get things going. Um, and it's something I've been seeing an awful lot recently and that's how we're approaching Webflow projects. I think we're approaching Webflow projects in the wrong way. So stick around and we're just gonna have a chat about it. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sam Gregory. I'm a website consultant and developer. I've been a website developer for, for over 10 years now. And this is my channel where I discuss all things web. And in specific, my Webflow and Code series is all about the underlying technology that you're writing in Webflow or creating in Webflow. So as I say, something I've been seeing an awful lot recently is, is how certain individuals are approaching their Webflow projects, their websites. If we were to flip over to um, this website here and inspect, inspect this element, then what you'll see is that the lines are written, and I've said this so many times, the website reads um, the HTML line by line. So if you've, got a, if you've got a piece of text there and then in the next line you've got another piece of text which is what you can see in this website here, then a screen reader is gonna read that bit of text twice. And I think we're approaching them as we would approach Figma or a design piece of software. And there's not enough attention being given to the performance of our website, the sort of how users interact with it, how it functions. My first kind of hint, I guess, is to basically create as little HTML as possible. The, the, the smallest amount of HTML that you can uh, add to the page will increase the performance um, of it. Often the temptation is to, you know, if we want to achieve a certain style, we'll duplicate that bit of text. Um, what that's doing is when a screen reader approaches or, or, or scans and indexes your website, it's actually reading that piece of text twice. It's not going to be able to understand it. Similarly, if a spider is coming onto a website, reading that bit of text twice, it's going to struggle to understand what your website is about. So although I don't have a specific solution for this, I'm, I guess I'm just approaching this and suggesting that you and you know, the, the frame of mind that you um, are entering building a Webflow project is to reduce the amount of duplication as possible. Sometimes we just cannot get around it. Um, and there are certain uh, things we, we could think about when, when it comes to trying to hide certain piece of text so it doesn't get read twice or doesn't get indexed twice. Uh, and you can use things like a rear hidden, uh, which is, an, which is a, a, um, an attribute that you stick on any element and it will actually hide that bit of text um, from the um, from the screen reader or the index. Similarly, you can use a real label. So an example of this might be, and we're going a little bit off topic here, but example of this might be on a close, uh, you know, a close menu icon and you might just want like a cross or like an icon or something like that. And this is fine, but if a screen reader was to latch onto that uh, link, um, it won't know what it is. It won't, it won't have anything to read. So what we can use is a real label to actually insert um, a label and say close menu, something descriptive or something like that. So, you know, those kind of two things come hand in hand. And I, I strongly suggest considering those when there's no other option but to duplicate this content. Um, but before that, just, just thinking about that, you know, adding these elements, whether it's design sort of flourishes, you know, things like that. adding elements is going to slow down your website. So if you've got it as small as you can possibly make it, and there's still opportunities where you need to duplicate elements, then consider what that looks like to a screen reader, what that looks like to a search engine, engine spider and and think, does this read okay? And then you, you can then use the uh, rear hidden attributes or area labels just to tr provide a little bit more context. Another point actually is that 
the more CSS and styling that you add to your website is also gonna slow down your website. It's gonna create a larger CSS file. So, not, and I've mentioned this in the past, not only should you try and really just reset, hold Alt and reset, um, reset values that you're not using, um, or sometimes I find that if I'm, I, I'm overriding a value, with the same value that um, has been set on a larger breakpoint. And if you remember, we've spoken previously about that Webflow is desktop first. So it go, you start with your desktop design and then you work down. So if you, if you set a font size as 15 pixels in the desktop and it stays 15 pixels uh, throughout mobile and tablet breakpoints, then set it in the desktop and let it cascade downwards. We've spoken about this in the CSS episode. If you do tend to override it, you know, and you set 15 pixels in your tablet view, then reset that value because it's creating a small size. Um, we need to be more conscious. We need to be more conscious about the styles we create, the elements we create, and the impact that has on both accessibility, um, screen readers, search engines, and the actual speed and performance of our website. So that's it, really. Um, in summary, let's stop approaching our Webflow projects like we would a piece of software like Figma, Sketch, or Photoshop. The more elements we create, the more styles we create will slow down our website. And the more uh, text and, and um, duplications we make will confuse search engines, it will confuse screen readers. Um, so we can't, we need to be more mindful, basically, of everything that we're creating. And you know, make it part of your workflow at the end of it to really go through and start stripping away gumph, stripping away stuff that we don't need, that is just gonna, is superfluous basically. And then we can increase the performance and indexability of our Webflow websites. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, welcome again to season three. If you liked this episode, please give it a like. Um, and let me know in the comments um, if you have any questions or anything like that. I'm really, I'm, I love, I love responding to my audience. Um, and if you, if you want to hear more about the underlying code and the underlying technology that's happening uh, in your Webflow projects and how best to increase performance, increase uh, SEO, increase the accessibility of a website, then hit the subscribe button and uh, check out season one and season two because this is the very first episode of season three. So uh, yeah, happy no coding. <laughs>